mind. I've made up my mind. There's no, uh, <laughs> there's no half measures. But you did come around, okay? So that's just that's good on you, girlfriend. Good on you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Where you grew up? Certainly. I was born and raised in Cape Town. Um, when I was 16, my family, my mom, and seven of my siblings, we relocated to Johannesburg. I started working almost immediately. I then traveled a little bit. What were you working at back then as a, as a child la slave labor? I, <laughs> I started working at a very beautiful exclusive jewelry store in the Carlton Center. So that was the early 80s. I bet you that's I not there anymore. Loved yeah. It. <laughs> yeah, no, no. And then um, I wanted to study gemology. And then I went to New York to the university. They wouldn't accept me though. Um, Why? I didn't, what is wrong with I you? I didn't do matric. Yeah, I didn't do matric. So obviously. Um, and then I came back and a year later I bought a business, a um, nail bar. And I had that for about five years. And then I got married. I sold and I moved to Switzerland. Wow, that's a hell of a move. Switzerland? What was that like? Yeah. What was the Absolutely husband like? Beautiful. The husband, he was, he, he was good. He was good as a husband, as an ex-husband, no, but um, <laughs> Switzerland was absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, bit of a culture shock for both of us. Um, so we stayed for two and a half years and then we moved to Germany. Was, was he German to start with? He was, yes, he's German. Okay. All yes. right. yeah. yeah. Okay, and then you had a thousand children and came home? Um, something like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had two kids, and then I moved back when I was six months pregnant with my last born, my baby girl. Um, yeah. So I have three children, and today I have three grandchildren. Congratulations. You don't look Thank old you. enough Thank to you. be a grandma, girlfriend. That's always good. Always good to you. <laughs> <laughs> I first met you when you started doing the most fabulous mushrooms. What was that, about two years ago? I think you mean olives. Oh, yeah, those things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was I was looking at the confusion on your face and thinking, why is she so confused? I mean, like, don't you remember? I was trying that? to figure out do I let it slide and go along with the mushrooms? No, definitely don't let it slide. Call me on it, absolutely. <laughs> it was definitely the um olives, yeah. Yeah, they were delicious. So is that Thank how you, you got is were you always interested in food? Um, the passion has always been there, yes. Um, and I started in 2010, where I did really catering, you know. And then in 2012, I was retrenched, and I started doing markets. And by pure accident, I started with spices. Okay, spices and are fabulous. Yes. Um, that's my main business, actually. Um, and what I used to do when I first started, I would just buy spices and then repack everything into small little packets. It was so ridiculous. And then I started doing research and then I um, came up with a label and then I um, started making my own spice mixes oh, nice. from scratch and that I still do. And so I started supplying a few stores and chefs and restaurants, coffee shops. Yeah. So then, so then how did we get from spices to, to mushrooms, notice? How did we get from spices to olive? <laughs> You're sticking to it, right? I'm sticking to my mushrooms. You know what it is? And we had mushrooms to start the week off. And then you were talking about mushrooms strong enough pies. And now I've just got mushrooms on the, on the brain. Mushroom, mushroom, really, mushroom. Really there's fungus growing somewhere. Um, <laughs> olives, 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 olives. How did you go from spices to olives? <laughs> Um, my sister used to bring me quite a few olives from Germany. I have two sisters that fly for SAA. And quite honestly, I didn't quite know what to do with it. And I ended up with a whole batch. And then I made a tapenade. Lovely. And 
my neighbors um, bought two jars and the following week she came for 10 jars and the week after that she came for 20 jars and before I knew it um, all of her colleagues um, were buying tapenade and then I started supplying um, a little coffee shop in Cresta Center and then from there I moved to I my first stuffed olive I made was with cashew nut I remember and it's the one yeah, that yeah, I those called, the mushrooms um, that I came to get from your house, right? The ones, the mushrooms that were stuck with the cashew nut. Yeah, those ones. Correct, correct, that one. <laughs> um, and it basically started from there. And when I did a few postings on Facebook, it kind of blew up, which was fantastic. And you were one of the first people to came that came and bought. I remember you bought five jars. I did. So um, I, yeah, I kept going then. And then I started messing around with more flavors and, and especially herbs, fresh herbs. So, yeah, that's how the, um, the mushrooms came about. <laughs> Who was the cook in your family? Where did the love of cooking come from? Definitely my mom. Yeah, she's a great cook. She was a fantastic cook, fantastic, very difficult. Um, very, she was a perfectionist. Um, my mom was a fantastic cook. Uh, when I was... Um, when I was a young girl, my mom had the, the, the knife skill and I've never seen anyone chop onions as fast as my mom. And I used to think to myself, hmm, when I grow up, I'm going to be <laughs> I'm gonna be as fast as you. <laughs> <laughs> no, my mom was a fantastic cook. Can you do the knife thing, chop, chop, chop? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm a bit of a show off, actually, when it comes to that. No, yeah. I can't. Um, <laughs> No, I, no. I, I, I tend I start, to do that. No, I, I yeah. cut my fingers when I start fart assing around like that. I, I promise you, I think I cut myself every week in the kitchen. No, I have that too. I actually cut myself very badly uh, three weeks ago. Really, really bad. So that was painful. And it's only oh. now healing. Do we yeah. have blood marinated? I did not too. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you no. a funny story about <laughs> chopping stuff up. My yeah. dad was quite a fussy eater. He was a meat and potatoes guy. And heaven forbid you put anything strange in front of him. And there was a Japanese restaurant, like a really fancy Lani Japanese in town at one of the hotels, like the, mm -hmm. the Sheraton or the Sun International Hotel in town or whatever. That It's now yeah. something else. Um, anyway, so that my mom wanted to go there for supper with family. And so she phoned them and she said... Um, my husband doesn't eat anything strange or anything exotic. Can you make him a steak? And they said, yes, we'll make him a steak because they sat at this, the, they had a, a square thing when the chef used to cook in front of you, your food, and then you used to go into the next one and cook their yeah. food. Anyway, so yeah. they said, oh, that's no problem. We'll put a steak on and we'll get a nice piece of rump and, and do that for him and you can have it, you know. So fantastic. Anyway, so they're all sitting at around this table and yeah. this magnificent looking piece of meat arrives this gorgeous piece of rum. Anyway, they're talking and my dad's like drooling because there's this, oh, wow, look at this piece of steak they got me and everybody yes. else can stick to their, their shrimps and their noodles and whatnot. I'm going to eat steak. And he blinked. And in the time he blinked, this Japanese chef had chopped up that piece of meat into mincemeat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he said no. he's, never, he's never seen anything so fast in his entire life. It was like, chick, 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 boom, mincemeat. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, ate, he ate his steak with like a <laughs> like one little piece at a time he was very upset so yeah i don't have that kind of knife skill i have to tell you that's just you know me i, I cut myself i have the scars to prove it battle scars oh, and stuff up. <laughs> no, i'm not that fast <laughs> did, did you help your mom cook oh yes definitely we all did that was the great thing um sunday lunch was big deal every sunday yeah and um that's not very muslim. We would do, i'm sorry it's not very muslim what do you mean <laughs> sunday lunch it's a very christian thing to do <laughs> no no sunday lunch was it, it had to be at sunday lunch and fridays but i mean oh, sunday that's lunch very, was that's sunday very lunch. that's very sabbath jewish sabbath okay so i see you were embracing the all the whole like spectrum of religion thing friday night supper <laughs> and sunday lunch fantastic yeah and we would obviously as teenagers we would go clubbing and we would come back and 
all of us would always be in the kitchen helping mom, always. Even when mom had catering jobs, we would always be in the kitchen with mom helping. So we went so, clubbing, yeah. is that the night but before or in the morning? <laughs> that was in the morning. Sometimes night before as well as in the morning. So how do you go clubbing and then get up early to help mom in the kitchen? That's just like a misnomer. No, no. You basically, from the club, you walk straight to the kitchen. That's how we did it. Because oh. mom wanted to know, mom wanted to hear all the stories as well. So that was great. Oh, we, you I have the five sisters. Oh, no, no, no. Mom was very cool like that. Did you go out as a group with your, your sisters? Heavy, heavy discipline. No, no, we had to stick to the curfew. Had to stick to the curfew. Yeah, five sisters. So, of course, mom wanted to hear all the stories, you know. So, so and what, that what, was fun. What was time weird. did you have to be home? Um, three, four. Holy cow! How old were you? <laughs> 17. Oh, God. My dad told me to be home by midnight when I was 18. No, but come on now. We had, with all the sisters and my brother, even though he was younger, but we had our friends. We could never go by ourselves. It always had to be a group. So we had friends in the neighborhood. So, yeah. Okay. No, so that you was arrived cool. on mass. Cool. You, were like a, you were like this roving party all by yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. No, no. When you came from the club, you didn't dare say you were tired. No, no, no. You did your Sunday chores and you helped in the kitchen. But it was fun. Then we would, mom would play music and she would get to hear all the stories, you know, who we met, who we didn't like, who we liked. Yeah, so it was great. And what did we cook? Oh, that was fun. That was fun. It was always, um, as if there was a celebration. So there would be your roast, leg of yeah. lamb, chicken roast, your yellow rice or savory rice, and then a curry, either chicken or um, mutton. And then all of the vegetables, of course. Um, and this was always dessert, always dessert, jelly, you know, bread pudding, sago pudding, depending if it was winter or summer. Um, and late afternoon, my mom would always bake bread. So for dinner, we would have hot buttered bread and but sometimes with cheese. Um, not necessarily. Not necessarily. We didn't always eat on a Sunday night because lunch was always really a feast, an absolute feast. We would have three, four different dishes at a time. Wow. So, sounds yeah, good. yeah. My dad used to, I, I, sorry, I, I seem to be talking about him tonight. I don't know why, but the stories that you're telling me about family mm-hmm. meals kind of inspire mm-hmm. me. His mother-in-law, his late mother-in-law, he used to adore her. And she would yeah. have like the whole family for dinner on a Friday night, but they didn't really have money. So what she would do, and it's funny because I've started doing it and I, I, I realized that we are got the idea from and it's fantastic. She would make all the starters, like in those days, you had to like pluck the chicken yourself and you know, all of that kind of stuff. Yes, so yes. She, would make, she would make loads of starters. She would bake the, the, the challah, the kitka bread for Friday night. And then she would make the chopped liver and, and uh-huh. chicken food is, is very rich. So, and then she would make chicken soup, but she would put the chicken into the soup hole, which is exactly what oh, I wow. started doing. So, and then you throw oh, all really? the vegetables and things in as well. And then you make canadalak, like are those, those dumplings that you put into the soup and they are quite cheap. Oh, yes, eat. yes. So she would make all of that and then she would fill them up. So with the starters, so they would have the, yeah, the, the chopped liver and the chopped herring or whatever. And then they would have soup and then everybody would say, oh, we actually, you know, we can't eat, we can't eat supper. We, we're fine. And that was her plan. Her plan was to make sure that there was not, nobody was going to eat, you know, anything further. <laughs> Because in the meantime, she'd roasted the chicken because the chicken was right. cooked from the thing and then you just pop it in the oven and, and roast it with a bit of chicken fat and the potatoes right. and, and whatever. And then there was lunch for Saturday, everybody for the family. So they, they used to, and then whatever was left over, she would like make into a stew for the, because in those days, chickens were actually big and they weren't, you know, they weren't like these, yes. these little scrawny things. Absolutely. Like so she could actually make it, yeah. make it last. So they literally would feed the family for the entire weekend on the supper that she made. For oh, Friday. wow. Um, and oh. that's how she used, but she used to make, I don't know how they do that today. I mean, you can't make food stretch like that anymore, but she used to, and, and chicken is so succulent when you do it that way. 
So now like I make chicken soup for my clients and I cook the whole chicken and then I roast it afterwards with potatoes and onions and I give it to my mom to feed her Ooh, very nice. husband and the carer. You know, <laughs> it makes life easier. So yeah, so, the, so yeah. So, and, and the chicken is succulent. But that sounds lovely. Yeah. Yes. But, but just I do, that, I do that as well. Just hearing your story about cooking with the family. I think that's so amazing. Have, is there like a tradition yes. like that in your house still? I mean, do you guys still get together? All right, uh, lockdown aside. Absolutely. 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 Um, we have eat. Um, my sister where I'm at now in Florida, she loves, she's a great cook herself. Um, she doesn't like being alone in the kitchen though. So we just need to be around, sit around. And she, she makes fantastic cakes and so we still do that. And especially when it comes to our celebration Eid, um, we tend to cook together. We tend to cook together, yes. So so what, about, what about this, the family lunches on a Sunday or the Friday night suppers and stuff? Does that still happen? Oh, yes, that still happens. Sunday lunch. Sunday lunch, not every Sunday, but yes, the occasional, you know, let's get together. Um, we did that a few weeks ago where... Um, we all bring something and then we end up making the main meal together. For instance, my sister made biryani and then we come really early in the morning as well. And then we just, we, we help her do that, you know, cause it's, everything needs to be done separately. So yes, we still do the cooking together. Cause we're not it's joling at nightclubs anymore, are we? <laughs> Damn it, no, no. <laughs> It's getting this lockdown, never mind, but getting old is a bitch, isn't it? Yeah. Tell me about it. <laughs> why, why, why do we trade as Sherry and not Sumaya? Um, Sherry is a nickname. When I first came to Johannesburg, believe it or not, people couldn't say my name, Sumaya. And my friend colleague at the time, she then changed my name. She just could not say Sumaya. And she started, she called me Sue for two days. And then she said, mm, no, that doesn't suit you. I'm going to call you Sherry. And that kind of stuck. Okay. Because now yeah, we have so no problem funny. calling you Sumaya, apparently. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> but tell us about some of your signature dishes. Tell, first, of all, first of all, tell us about the different kinds of olive mushrooms that you make. <laughs> um, okay. The The... There's one that I do, it's the Mediterranean, where I use a lot of fresh herbs and, and the garlic, and I'm very generous with olive oil. Um, that one I've now started calling the Melissa olive. There's a lady at 27 boxes, and every single day she would come for, for that particular one. Um, so that is the, the best seller at 27 boxes. And then the um, stuffed garlic and stuffed cashew nut. I do very well with that one as well. And then I discovered a different one, acha, acha olive. Oh, wow. People go that crazy. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not as hot as you would think, but it has a lot of garlic and it has your acha mixture of masala. Um, and I do that with the um, peach black olive. And then I have a jalapeno, creamy jalapeno wow. mayo. Um, that goes really well on a sandwich and I use the um, peach black olive that is sliced. Um, yeah. Um, you know, every week sort of, I haven't done olives now that I'm back. Um, so I've been doing food mainly, but every week it would be a different olive that would sell really well, you know, for the weekend. The last one I did was a Kalamata in a cranberry um, vinaigrette. Oh wow, that uh, with, sounds yummy. Yeah, with with um with nuts. And that one did really well. So it just depends, you know. One weekend it's the Mediterranean, the other weekend it's the um the pickled or the stuffed garlic or stuffed cashew nut. And then I do the deep fried olives as well. That that deep that's fried a huge olives. Tell us more about deep fried olives. Um I stuff it with cheese and then I crumb it and then I give it a bit of spice. Of course. And Any particular spice? <laughs> no, I'm not telling you, Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> Forget it. I'm not telling you. <laughs> oh, that's just so wicked, girl. Yeah. 
<laughs> and then I deep fry that and a sprinkle of some cheese over that. And it's like poppers. It's fantastic. Poppers really that good. you snort or the poppers that you eat? <laughs> <laughs> you both bad. make you You're high. <laughs> nah. what, about so, yeah. some, what about some nice like tapenade samosas? No. Come on, you you make chili olives, right? Yeah. Why not just chop them up and put them in a samosa wrapper and fry them, and then sell them with a bit of like a um, bit of writer or something? I don't think so. Oh come on! What do you think, Linda? Do you think that would work? <laughs> Say yes or no. Yes, no, no. There we go. See. See, I love, I love olives. My, my biggest problem with olives is you keep saying that, that horrible word. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It, where are you going? I have to move because believe it or not, my battery is low. Oh, so have you gone closer so to the plug? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Um, yeah. So now I've lost my train of thought completely. Okay. Oh, we were talking about that. We're not uh, doing the samosa. samosa. No, we're still talking about the samosa, the but first we're going to talk about numb. garlic. Okay. Okay. It, it's I love terrible garlic. stuff. It makes me horribly ill. In fact. Really? Yeah. I just, I'm growing some outside, funny enough. Linda, you'll have to tell me when I know it's ready, because I don't know when it's ready. I've got about different kinds of garlic in the garden, okay? Um. But I don't actually eat garlic. In fact, I went out for lunch with my mother the other day. We went to an Italian restaurant. And you know how they bring the stuff to the table? Garlic and parmesan yeah. and chopped chilies. And the garlic, yes. I could, and it was all, they, obviously fresh garlic. And they put yeah. it on the table. Cause, and they didn't um, put any oil or anything in the chilies. It was just chopped chili and chopped garlic. And from the, across the table, I wanted a hurl. I said, so please, can you just take the garlic oh. far away? I don't know. It's just I used to so love like garlic. Like allergic to garlic. Yeah, but only only after the age of about thirty. Um, up until oh, then, no. I loved garlic. In fact, the, fu oh, the funniest was we used to go to Gino's in the south to eat. In our yes, early I know 20s. them. Yeah, in our early twenties. Okay, when we were jawling and going to nightclubs. And, yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Not not in our teens, in our twenties, and. Um, <laughs> I said to the guy there, all I loved, loved to eat was pasta with butter and garlic. So I said to him, can I please have yes. pasta tossed with butter and garlic? Anyway, everybody's food arrived. And then eventually he came to the table with a little side plate. And on the side plate was a piece of toast piled high with garlic and butter. And, and I kid you, it was like this high. It was just garlic. <laughs> and I was like, what is that? He said, it's tossed with garlic. <laughs> Italian man. I was like, no, dude, I can't eat that. So yes, I used to just absolutely love garlic. And now I can't even, I don't even cook with it for my clients. And if I cook oh, with really? it, I can't, yeah, I mean, I, if I cook with it, I can't taste it. So, taste it. Yeah. So oh, I, that's a shame. If I'm I am going to cook with it, I cook with it, I cook their dish, I taste it, and then I add the garlic afterwards in, in the last 10 minutes. Because I just go okay. no way to... To taste I just want to oh, wow nauseous beyond and you keep saying garlic so I'm sitting here like oh my god I can smell it already <laughs> I, I do use a lot of I use a lot of garlic I have to say I even made a garlic tapenade garlic pickle tapenade and then I made a whole garlic pickle and I tell you people loved it I'm sure and, and what about people, roast garlic I did that too I did that too. Oh, I love garlic. What about aubergines? That's one of my favorite dishes. What I love make? aubergine as well. Mm -hmm. so I love aubergine. I, I made this last week. Yeah. But baby aubergine. I did baby oh, yeah? aubergine. What do you do with them? I, I just, I made couscous and then I just grilled a few just to place on top and then I brush it with garlic oil. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Mandy. <laughs> no, you know what? I, I, mean, I love garlic bread. It's one of my favorite things to eat. And I often will just oh, yes. eat it in spite of the fact that I, I know how I'm going to feel afterwards. But the, the thing oh. is, if you buy, I mean, I love hummus and tahina and 
I love tapenades and I, I just love that, that Middle Eastern, you know, style food. And oh, yeah, um, it's all got garlic in. So you just have to kind of, I know. you just have to kind of just eat it and then hope for the best. You know, like if I'm feeling sick, well, I've just eaten too much as opposed to it's the garlic. Yes, there is two, three olives that I actually leave deliberately without garlic because I have a few customers who's allergic to garlic. And there's the one lady, um, that was the first thing she said, and I've never heard of this, I'll be very honest. You know, I thought, okay, you either don't like garlic, but um, being allergic, I, I, I wasn't aware of that. So I deliberately leave three to four gar um, olives, olive mushrooms, where I don't put any garlic. I don't use any garlic in there. So, yeah. So speaking of mushrooms, and now we are going to speak of the real sort of fungi stuff. Um, okay. What, uh, do, you, do you ever pickle mushrooms? Because there's amazing salad with mushrooms and pecan nuts. I tried it a few years ago, I'll be honest. Um, it didn't work. It, it kept bubbling over. There's a few things that it still tends to bubble over, so I'm doing something wrong. But I've had it, and I, I like it very much. But I'm I'm not getting the mushroom pickle. What are you doing? What are you doing? You know, one of the little things that I've learned about pickling stuff is to get the vinegar and stuff hot first, and then just blanch the vegetable in the. So you don't leave the vegetable in there. there. Just blanch it in the hot thing, then take it out. Mm -hmm bottle the vegetable, yeah. pop it up with the vinegar. I've just done the most amazing, well, I haven't just done, I did them a long time before lockdown, pickled mushrooms. And you know, you, you kind of like, they completely astringent. <laughs> you eat the one and you, you're snorting the vinegar out of your nose. I mean, that's just the absolutely delicious. <laughs> <laughs> and the salad, but you can make a salad that's not for long-term use. It's literally bra, just button mushrooms with a, a lovely yeah. sugary vinaigrette and mm -hmm. bay leaves and lots of oregano and pecan nuts. Mm -hmm. And that's a fabulous mm -hmm. salad. It's nice mm -hmm. to sell I'm like for lunch it. and stuff. Yeah, I, do. I don't mind yeah. if you put it at Cherry's Pantry. You notice that I gave you the recipe. I didn't say I'm not <laughs> telling you what the spice is. <laughs> Thank you, Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> you, you see so much sharing is caring in this instance. <laughs> I like that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what what other signature dishes do you make so what what possessed you to go into seven boxes and take out a shop and rent i've actually been sort of studying that market for about two years because i really wanted to have you know with the olives it went really well um but what i found was not everyone felt comfortable coming to my house in general um to collect things. Um, and I've always wanted to have my own little space. And I thought, you know, it would um, allow me to, you know, a certain freedom. I could basically do what I wanted and that's what I wanted. Um, so I looked at 27 boxes. I had applied a few years ago um, and they were apparently full. And then I'll walked around and I had a meeting with a young lady there and she suggested I take not a container but the glass sort of kiosks and I thought mm, the rent is not too bad um yeah and so I decided okay if I if I don't make it yeah if I cannot pay the rent yeah then I'm gonna give up on cooking I'm, I'm never gonna cook again or do another olive mushroom so um <laughs> So it's, it's been great. And I moved in there in winter and it, it was fantastic, surprisingly. Um, and then when summer came, business wasn't quite the same um, last year. Um, so, and now I see winter again. Um, it's, for me especially, it's been, it's been great. It's been great. I'm, I'm very surprised that winter is better than summer for you because I, I yes. the Mediterranean style food is definitely more, you, you apply it more to summer than you do to winter. Absolutely. Absolutely. I tell you, I moved in June, July and I didn't have a fridge at the time and I didn't worry about it because, you know, it's, it's sort of concrete and I knew that um, my foods would be okay in the shop um, and cold enough. 
and I must be honest, I panicked a little bit because I thought it's winter. No one's going to want olives. But um, it's not been that good, June, July, August. And December comes and I thought, okay, great. It's going to be beautiful. No, it was very, very quiet. Yeah, well, the very problem with quiet. December is that Joburg empties out. You know, from the middle, <laughs> bless you, from the middle of December, you might as well close your business down regardless and take a holiday because people, Joburg are not here. But I think yeah, this December is going to be a little bit different. Um, people, yes. will be, people will be in Joburg this year. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think so. <laughs> so I think some They're not going anywhere. No, they're not going anywhere. So I think you'll, yeah, I think this year you'll have a, a better, much better December because people will be looking at places around, in and around Joburg to actually, yes. you know, to eat out. Yeah. Of. What other things do you sell at the pantry? I do my own whole grain mustards. I do my own marmalades um, and always a little different. I have a jalapeno and grape. Um, so it's whole grain mustards. I have spice rubs. Um, and then jalapeno and the grape. Tapenos. Sorry, I'm, I'm just coming back from the, the jalapeno and grape. Jalapeno and grape what? Like marmalade. Wow, okay. Yes. Yeah. So can a person and, and come and stand at the counter and taste everything? Would you get a little most, bit of Most weekends, yes. Most weekends. But after this... Um, with the corona and everything, things are a little different. So I tend to not do that. And even now I have to have everything covered. But of course I do do um, taste this last week. I gave out um, the mini mushroom pies. So <laughs> not really under olive normal pies. circumstances, I would have all my olives out and absolutely, um, absolutely you could taste. And my spreads and jellies and marmalades and mustards and yeah. So how do you balance the time of working in the shop and working in the kitchen? I mean, are you spending a lot of hours after hours putting, making yes, stuff? Yes. Yeah. And um, that is why I've been back now five weeks at 27 boxes. And I started off um, where I go in on a Friday because we work on a Sunday as well. And normally most of the other tenants, they are closed on a Monday. So I've not been, in during the week, I go strictly on a Friday because it gives me, I've had orders and things. So I take the week to prepay. Otherwise it was, it was killing me, you know, working during the week and then it's quiet, of course. And then working till 12, one, you, you know, 12, one in the morning preparing. And then you come back Friday from work and you've got to start all over, you know, so that everything can be fresh. Yeah. So. What, what I've, I've found is like right through lockdown, I, I still carried on making meals for people and sort of delivering it. So I would do the shopping, get the orders on a Monday, do the shopping on a Monday, do the cooking on a Tuesday, and then pack everything and deliver on a Wednesday. And I found like by yes. today, I'm finished. I'm absolutely exhausted. Absolutely. The, the yes. adding to that is because Gogo wasn't here for that, you know, up until two weeks ago, I was doing the washing mm -hmm. up as well and cleaning up and cleaning the kitchen, putting everything <laughs> away. I actually, you eventually don't know who your name is. You're like, like what am I doing? I, and you work oh, yeah. more money than you did before. It's crazy. And then Absolutely. My friend, my friend Nikki said to me, why don't you send Martin to fetch Gogo on a Tuesday morning and then take her home Tuesday afternoon? And at least you've got that backup to help you on a Tuesday. Yes. I can't tell you how much it's changed my life. We are finished cooking by three o'clock. The kitchen is cleaned oh, wow. by four o'clock and Gogo is gone. I mean, it's oh, just wow. amazing. So I try and break the back of the cooking on the Monday um, so that on Tuesday, all we really have to do is finish up and make all the starches and the sauces that go with the food and stuff. Right. But everything else is, and then just pack everything and label it. But it's absolutely yeah. changed my life that I am I'm still a human being by Tuesday night. Otherwise, I'm like crawling... You know, and then you get out of bed on Wednesday and nothing is working. Everything hurts. <laughs> yes. Shame my, my sisters, my family, sometimes when I, when I visit, um, I tend to then just pass out. And then because after two weeks or three weeks of, you know, working four nights a week till 12, one, two in the morning, and then it takes me a while to obviously shut down. Yeah. So you, you end up going to bed three, three thirty. You know, and you've got to be up early in the morning. So wherever I go, I 
pass out. I absolutely pass out. And I don't have the help, unfortunately, not anymore. So, yeah, I, I'm all by myself. I, um, um, my sisters, they help me, yes. But, I mean, they can't be with me every single day. So, yeah. So, yes. Um, sometimes, uh, three weeks ago, they had to talk to me. I said, this is not worth it, you know. I'm going to bed late. I'm exhausted. I'm not making money. Whenever I make money, I've got to buy stock. And I don't want to buy stock. I'd like to buy a lipstick. <laughs> I need shoes. I need boots. <laughs> but but I absolutely, I, I do enjoy it. I do enjoy it. I, I, know, that, it. I know that feeling. I've actually worn yeah. more lipstick during lockdown than I have in the last sort of 10 years <laughs> not tonight but normally for zoom sessions i put on some lipstick and i put on makeup and then and then so actually my lipsticks are running out it's like the first time ever i've had them for years and now suddenly i've worn lipstick every night for like the last <laughs> so i think i've done about 40 zoom sessions now so it's a bit crazy i have to go and buy some lipstick oh wow oh so i'm looking for cheapos because i mean i wear it for an hour and then i smear it off as fast as possible was yeah now with head. the mask as well yeah, with a mask, you don't have to wear it at all. It's fabulous. Yeah. Um, was your landlord okay during lockdown? I mean, what kind of arrangement did you make with him? Me? Mm. Oh, no. The shop um, landlord. 27 not... boxes, you mean? Yeah. Um, hmm. I think it's, it's, it's safe for me to um, refrain from answering that. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm still there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still there. I'm still there. We're still there. So, okay. Yeah. Maybe did no, they give you a lot didn't. of stick though or during the lockdown or whatever. They're polite. Um, yes. Yes. Let's let's say that. Let's just I have to deal with Standard Bank tomorrow, and I'm not going to be quite polite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was actually more worried about uh, my bond. So, but that is all sorted. But so is 27 boxes. So um, oh, well, good. we've come to some sort of arrangement, yeah. What's yeah. next for Sumaya? What's next? I would like a, a bigger shop. And then I would like to have some help where I could perhaps, you know, sit back every now and again and enjoy the coffee, you know, and say, have you finished the quiche? It's time for the chicken to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I'm going to be doing this for, for, for a while. Um, yeah, we'll see next year. We'll see okay. next year. Listen, next year's around mm. the corner. It's actually coming very fast. Very, very fast. I know. It's scary. It's scary. Besides um, pies and stuff, do you sell any sweet baked goods in your shop? Um, yes, I started baking uh, weekends as well. That's the other thing. Um, today I made some puff pastry. So I'd like to fill that with some nice berries. And make your I own puff made... pastry? No, come on now. No, because I was like, um, I was like, shit, you're Wonder Woman. If you're making your own puff pastry, you are absolutely Wonder Woman because I would go and buy mine. There's no way I'm going to make it. I, I used to, but you know, you stand for three, four days and then you get. 16 pies out of that dough. Do you know what my mom used to make her own? Strictly. My mother used to be very sticky about that. So my mom made her own puff pastry, all pastries. Um, but no, I, I, no, I can't do everything. <laughs> I, I, no. <laughs> I, but I do buy it from a lady that, um, that makes the, um, the different pastries. So I get puff pastry from her. So, and I'm very happy with it. So, yeah. So, hmm. I was going to make biscotti today. I got this fabulous recipe book from Straight called um, Out of an African Kitchen or something. Um, yeah. From this fabulous, it must be very expensive luxury camp in, the, in Kenya on the, on the Maasai Mara there. Mm -hmm. And one yeah. of the recipes in the book is this beautiful almond biscotti. So I had it in my head today that mm -hmm. I was going to make almond biscotti. So what did I do? I stayed in bed all in day. In bed? Yes. <laughs> Good for you. Good did. For I stayed you, in man. bed. I did. I did. I kind of started lining up. I, I was working. I promised I did a bit of work, like a bit of work. I lined up <laughs> doing three of next week's speakers, but the rest of the time I actually either slept or watched or watched Netflix. It was absolutely fantastic. So tomorrow oh, man, morning, 
I'm going to have to try and make these biscotti because they look amazing. And you keep it in the freezer. You you want them, you just slice it off and put them in the oven. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe you can share that recipe with us. Well, I don't know about that because I've already shared one with you and you still won't tell me what spices you put on the deep fried olives. So... <laughs> We'll talk later. Yeah. What's it worth? There are actually a couple of nice recipes in that book. You'll, I think you'll enjoy it. I'll, I'll show it to you. Um, okay. In fact, I'm trying to get the lady who did the cookbook um, here for my book week. We're doing a book week in August. And uh, yeah. I want, I'm going to try and get her from Kenya on, on Zoom to, to talk to us because it's a lovely oh, book. Oh, nice. Yeah. And all the chefs are in it, all the Kenyan chefs they've got the, and what their oh. specialities are. And they've got oh, the wow. Book. Oh, Linda, you'll love this. They've got their own garden. In fact, let me show you. Hang on a sec. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm not going far. I'm right here. <coughs> They've got this amazing, amazing garden, which they have to keep the elephants and everything out of. And uh, elephants, honey badgers, and all those creatures that they crawl in underneath the ground. So, um, so this is one of the. I don't know if you can see. No. Can you see that? Do I click on? Um... No, no. Just look on the. Just look on the computer. I don't know if you can see it. Are you looking on your phone? Might be a little small for you on the phone, but. Um, yeah. Okay, let's try this. So that's their like greenhouse with their herbs. But the garden oh, is just wow. Let me see if I can find the garden picture. Oh yeah, look here. Here's a picture of the garden. I can't see anything. And it's just amazing, amazing, amazing. So what I'm gonna ask them to do is if I can do a, a talk with her, I'm gonna ask her to actually show us, you know, the pictures and, sh and screen share the pictures. Yeah. But yeah, he has that biscotti recipe. It looks absolutely divine. Mm. So yeah, so there, there's some very nice recipes in here. So um, it's called Out of an African Kitchen Recipes and Stories. And they tell you all the stories about mm -hmm. the, the place and, and uh, same place that they took the photos for Out of Africa. So yeah, I, okay. I, I really enjoyed reading that. I don't normally read, my mother reads recipe books in bed. I don't do that. <laughs> I mean, last night I was lying in bed and I read the recipe book from cover to cover. So I'm thinking like, who am I and where's Mandy? What have you done with? <laughs> I am my mother's child. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. I realized that many years ago when I was about 30 and I was in my shop and I started shouting about something and every word that came out of my mouth, I thought, shit, I sound just like my mother. Oh my. <laughs> That's exactly when you realize that you are your mother's children. I think we all have those moments. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God, it sounded just like my mom. <laughs> so, so Maya, I'm going to ask you for one parting shot and then I'm going to let you go. And um, well, you can't drink alcohol. So um, I'm going to let you go and have a cup of tea to calm down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mandy. Thank are, you you. are you less nervous now? <laughs> yes, I am. Yeah, you Thank see. You, you see, You've it's fabulous. Um, what about growing and selling some herbs at the at the shop? I absolutely want to do that. I um, had a chat with, before the lockdown, of course, um, with our nursery upstairs. Okay. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, the lockdown happened. So um, Is I the nursery still there? That. Yes, yes. Because I was going to suggest that you chat to Linda, who's, who's sitting above your head over there. And because uh, oh, Linda sought I mean, after seedlings, and uh, maybe you could make an arrangement for some um, yes. heirloom seeds or to grow some heirloom, heirloom veggies and things that you could sell. That would be awesome. But then you'd be that gardening be as well. You'd be gardening as well as. Um... <laughs> but but you know what I you know what I've done um, before the lockdown. I have two huge right next to the shop and I actually started growing coriander and basil. Basil is the one herb that I use um, quite a bit. Um, so I started growing chilies, basil, um, parsley, uh, coriander. What about lemongrass? And lemongrass and mint. Oh, I love lemongrass and mint. Lots of mint. Yes, yes. So absolutely.
Should I tell you my little technique for getting cheap lemongrass plants? Don't tell anyone. Is if you go to the supermarket and or yeah. a, a veggie shop, and you know how they sell one or two sticks of the lemongrass in a little plastic thing? You just take that yes. home and you throw it into some water and it shoots. It shoots. Um, no. Yes, it does. It absolutely shoots roots. And then you just plant oh, it wow. right under a tap. And I have beautiful lemongrass mm. plants that cost me seven rand for two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to try that. I love lemongrass. Yeah, I know. It's fabulous. Just, you know, instead of, um, and you don't often find it at nursery, so you might as well grow your own. No, no. What about your okay. own turmeric and ginger and stuff like that? Because that's just. Can I tell you? Those two things, as well as rosemary, I don't know what it is. They don't like me. And I mean, I am a total turmeric fanatic. Um, but they just will not take with me. Rosemary grows like a weed. Yeah, How can you not turmeric. grow rosemary? I can plant anything else, really. Anything else will survive. But ginger, turmeric, no. I've tried it so many times. In actual fact, I've trying to pull roots again to try again. I have a little sort of miniature um, herb table in my lounge because of the sun that I get. Just put the, just put the root directly into the, into a pot in the ground and finished. Don't, don't I've try and it. don't try and root it in something else. Stick it straight into, keep it into a pot because it runs and put that yeah. all the ginger directly into the pot, into the soil and it'll grow like you won't believe. And when the leaves die off, it means it's ready to harvest. But you must okay, wait at least two years. You've got to wait at least two years, all right? <laughs> so why are you telling me? Because <laughs> you told me you're going to be doing this for a very long time, girl. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's like no. I've started saving pineapple heads to grow my own pineapples. But I mean, you've got two to three years before they start to yield pineapples, okay? So in the garden, they're like about six and there's about five or six on my windowsill as well. And I'm so sick of buying <laughs> celery because I use loads and loads of celery. I've now kept about six or eight celery bottoms and I'm trying to grow it, regrow yes. that. You know, it's just, instead of just hemorrhaging money all the time, if you can just regrow your own and finish. I see but that's what I do. away there. <laughs> no, no, no. That's exactly what I do. I never, um, I'm, I'm never short of um, spring onion. Yeah, me too. I always, yeah, I, I always have spring onion um, indoors and outdoors. And I always have um, mint. Yeah, no, mint grows like a weed. It's a bit tricky sometimes, yeah. And I have lots of spearmint oh, every delicious. year. Yes, yes. One day when um, Der uh, Dirk Mayer was still at Mayford, he told me that he planted his entire garden with his, all his grass was a, a mint like mint ground mint ground cover so that when you walked it just released this minty this, kind of yes. scent he said it was absolutely amazing but it wasn't frost oh, hardy. Wow. It was something that they had to redo anyway oh wow so maya what That's are you making amazing. this weekend in case one can actually get to 27 boxes to come and buy something i've done some sort of mediterranean um pastries and i have chicken curry um I've had a few people ask me for that. And then I have the different pies, steak pies, butter chicken pie, chicken mushroom, um, chickpea salad, and what else? Um, yeah. And halloumi. Yes. What about halloumi? I'm known for my, I do a marinated halloumi. Oh, nice. Yes, it's delicious. Absolutely delicious. Do you do any marinated tofus? Um, no, can I tell you why? But I'm going to start again. I, a while back, I had perhaps a bad tofu dish. I, I did not like it. And so I thought, I'm never eating this again. And I'm pretty easy. I will um, try almost anything. Um, so I will experiment with some tofu, yes. Well, if you I just go, like if to you go to um, the little Chinese shop at Carrera Center, they have fresh tofu exactly, that they sell yep. you at the yeah, they sell it at the bucket. It's very inexpensive. I mean, like twenty yeah. rand will get you like a kilo of the stuff or something. 
um and then what we make um feta like a feta cheese alternative but with it you know just yeah. olive oil and, and lemon juice and oregano and stuff like that and you just let it marinate and then it's very nice in salad if you if you don't want to eat cheese anyway Ooh, okay i'll mess around with it go for it that's exactly i get quite a few things from from that from that store yeah and it's, when they have i supplied night. the other store you know flower and nut yeah yeah I like I, those I them. They, aren't they just lovely? It's so funny. I walk yes, in and I'll say, lovely. where's mom? Because we always go shopping together. Or she'll go yeah. in and I'll say, where's Mandy? <laughs> <It's so funny. laughs> they are lovely. They're so lovely. But I supply them with spices. So. Oh, fantastic. Well, guess where I'm coming for my spices next. I didn't know you actually sold spices. So now I know it's fabulous. Yeah. Do you make dukkha? You need I actually, I've made, yes. Because the, the, the recipe for dukkah is in this, the recipe for dukkah is in this African cookbook and I've never seen it before. So it's nice to have actually have a recipe on hand now. Yeah, so it was so make. weird. I, I had made it two days. I, I had it in the shop for two days. And then a lady went into the bakery just opposite my shop. And she came out and one of the boys from the bakery um, came out and asked, do you have it's something called Duka, Duka, Duka? I said, actually, yes, I do. I just made it two days ago. So she bought a few jars and, um, and some other spices as well. But I do. Yeah. Fantastic. So, yeah. Yeah, Sherry, it's been absolutely fabulous chatting to you. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'm glad you got Thank over you. your stage fright. Everybody Thank else is here. <laughs> Thank you for being with us. Uh, there's nothing Thank tomorrow. You. But on Saturday morning, we are chatting to chef, executive regional chef, Fernando Roman, who is in Bangkok. He's the regional oh, nice. chef for um, a chain of hotels in, in Thailand. And uh, that's who we're chatting to at 10.30 on Saturday morning. So please join us then. And everybody else, have a fabulous evening. Lovely to see you all. Have a great evening tomorrow. See you on Saturday. Bye, guys. Bye, Sumaya. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Mandy.